So moving on to one of the most important theorems, and the reason I say that is I've seen many um, teachers like to use this one in exams, and it's just a very useful theorem. So as always, we will start off by drawing ourselves a circle. We're then going to draw one tangent. We're then going to draw a chord inside the circle, but one of the sides of the chord must begin or end at the point where the tangent touches the circle like that for example or you could do one like this as long as it doesn't go through the diameter or not the diameter as long as it doesn't go through the center of the circle and as long as one of its edges touches the point where the tangent connects to the circle so this point over here what we're now going to do is take chord AB and we're going to form some angle on the edge of the circle like this or you can do an angle like this if you want it doesn't matter so I'm gonna call that C now now this is what Euclid came up with what he said is that you must take the tangent and then you take a chord and then you must locate the angle that is in between those two lines so now technically that could be this big angle over here or it could be this small one but if we use the big one, then we cross over this line. So let's not do that for now, just to keep things neat. Just like that over there. Now what Euclid found was that that angle that we have just made will always be equal to any other angle that the chord, so the chord that we are using, which is AB, it'll be equal to any other angle that that chord makes. Now we saw that that chord forms C. And so what Euclid said, is that this angle B will be the same as angle C. Now we can try it in a different way. Let's use the tangent once again. And let's use this chord here. Then what we'll do is we'll locate the angle in between those two, which is this one over here. And what Euclid found was that that angle will be equal to any other angle that that chord makes, which would be A. Because BC forms A because if you start at C and you make your way towards A, okay, it gets there like that. And then if you start at B, it also gets to A. And so the chord BC does form A. And so what we would then say is that this angle over here, this big angle that goes between the two green lines, will be equal to this angle A over here. Now the reason you would use, so let's say this was letter F, you could say that angle C, B, F is equal to angle A and it's a very simple reason it's because we're using a tangent and a chord so we call it the tan chord so that should have a little dot theorem like that so for example in this question over here we could okay so we see the tangent and then we just need to find another chord that connects to that tangent so I'm going to use BC then we find the angle that is in between those two well that's going to be the 50 degrees now that 50 degrees or that angle will be the same as any other angle that is formed by that chord. So if we had to start at B, it would eventually lead to A. And if we had to start at C, it would also lead to A. So what that means is that BC forms A. And so straight away we can say that angle A will be equal to 50 degrees. And the reason is the tan chord theorem. So let's identify the tangent once again, and a different chord. There we've identified AC. Now the tan chord theorem says that that angle which is in between the two green lines, which is the 60 degrees, that will be equal to any other angle formed by that chord. So if we start off at A, well A can definitely reach B, and C can also reach B. And so what that means is that chord AC forms angle B. And so we can say that angle B will be equal to 60 degrees and that's also because of the tan chord theorem. So just remember you're looking for a tangent and you're looking for a chord that connect with each other. The angle in between those two will always be the same as any other angle formed by that chord. So it's a very important theorem. So I'm going to try and I'm going to do another example. So first step is to notice that there's a tangent. Next is to find any chord that touches that tangent. Then you need to locate the angle in between the two green lines, which is going to be the 60 degrees. Now that 60 degrees will be the same as any other angle that is formed by the chord. 
So let's see what angles are formed by chord AB. Well all you do is you start at A and you follow along any line and you start at B and you go along any line and you see where you land up. Oh we landed up at C. So straight away we can say that C is equal to 60 degrees and that's going to be the tan chord theorem. That's the reason. So let's locate the tangent once again and then we can find a different chord. We then locate the angle in between, which technically, yes, I agree, it could be this big one, but it's neater if we just use this one over here. Now what the tan chord theorem tells us is that that angle, the 110 degrees, will be the same as any other angle formed by that chord. So if we start off at C and we just follow any path, we'll get to A. And if we start at B, we will also get to A. And so chord BC forms angle A. So because of that, we can say that angle A is 110 degrees, and that'll be the tan chord theorem.